So, a recession. I mean, that a recession just occurs when growth stops and the economy starts to shrink. They're inevitable. They're unpredictable. And you can take steps to prepare yourself for them. Right? Uh, you know, it's just... It's impossible to know in advance exactly when they're going to hit or how bad they're going to be. And some recessions are mild, right? Economic activity declines, unemployment rises, but the economy quickly recovers. Other recessions, such as the 18-month from 2007-2009 downturn, often referred to as the Great Recession, man, wreaked widespread havoc on millions of people's financial lives before economic growth got anywhere close back to normal. And that downturn would be followed by more than a decade of growth. A whole decade. Ten years. Up, 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 up. That sounds pretty good. We like that part. So you can't control what happens to the wider economy, but there's some stuff you can do to help survive, you know, these financial headwinds, right? So one of the first things that we're going to talk about, plan. Spending plan, your money, what are you doing with it? How how much are you getting? How much are you spending? Where's it going? What are you doing? And if you've never had a budget or have one you never consult, you might want to take a, a run at making another one. Knowing where your money's going is going to help you prepare and adjust when tough times come a-knocking. Now, this is particularly true If you're expecting a decline in income, whether from a job loss or anything else, if a recession interferes with your ability to cover any of your expenses, your first step may be to pay bills strategically and then try to figure out and know where to find assistance. Now, you know, if you're able to meet expenses, but you still want to improve your financial footing... There's a great uh, budget called the 50-30-20 budget. Solid choice, right? You can assign where your money's going to go for your needs, your wants, you know, savings, debt payoff, however you want to do it. 50-30-20, right? There's a bunch of online tools you can use to track your spending or, you know, budget worksheets that can help you remember to include expenses that don't happen every month. You know, there's so many things online that you can do, right? There's no reason to not have a plan. And then once you know where your dollars are going, you just look for places to kind of trim the fat, right? We're going to get a little snip snip. Finding ways to save money can help you bulk up that emergency fund or proactively lower how much debt you have. Also, you might want to consider ways to make extra money. A side hustle not only feeds your emergency fund and financial resilience, but it also gives you a A plan B to help out if your hours or wages get cut. Now, not about spending, but still important to consider. If your field of employment is vulnerable to a recession, but you've not yet been laid off, you probably need to keep that resume updated. You know, and be diligent about your networking, keeping in contact with people, meeting new people. It's wise to have a game plan to handle job loss to help you, you know, through the immediate aftermath. You don't want to be... You know, sitting around for too long. You want to get back in there and get making money. So, now that we got a spending plan, we know where our money's coming from. We know what we're doing with it. We gotta work on that savings. We gotta, gotta beef it up. Right. Get a whole bunch of it. We save a lot of money. Now we're gonna start with savings, right? And you start with the savings you have now, and you try to build it as much as you can. Now, that can be difficult in the face of a drop in income, but if you're able to save even just a little bit each month, that cushion's going to come in handy down the road, I promise. When you're $5 short, it's like, ah, you're going to think every little bit counts, right? So, if you do have some savings, one step you can take today is to switch to like a high-yield savings account. So think uh, Federal Reserve rate, right? It's increased, and it's led to banks bumping up their yields. Some accounts, particularly online banks, might be a little north of about 3% APY. 
compare that to the average savings rate of 0.24%? Yeah, no brainer there. Now, from there, you can build your account balance over the next few months by setting up or increasing an automatic transfer from checkings to savings, and you can have this on a regular basis, such as each payday. Now, saving your tax refund and any other windfalls also, you know, that's going to go a long way to beefing up that emergency fund. Now, in addition, make sure you're not paying, you know, too many monthly fees, right? And even if, if it's like for, you know, your bank and stuff like that, you know, a lot of it should be free. Some banks will waive surcharges if you keep a minimum balance amount. But if you're concerned about paying monthly fees in the future, consider putting your money in a free account that doesn't charge them at all. Now, this is a six-letter word that a lot of people don't like. Credit. We gotta, gotta talk about it. Now, <clears throat> high interest debt, like credit card debt, can be especially difficult to shed when money's tight. Interest charges pile up real quick, especially when interest rates are going up. Now, if you're making only the minimum payments while adding new charges to the balance, it's, it's going to become unmanageable. It's just, it's, it's inevitable. You could consider moving your high interest debt to a card with an introductory, like, 0% APR offer on balance transfers. You'll generally need good or excellent credit, right? Think, uh, like, 690 or higher to qualify for those. And in most cases, you'll have to pay a balance transfer fee of about 3 to 5%, somewhere in that range. Um... And then, you know, a move like that could save you a lot of money and interest, especially if you pay off the debt during the promotional period. Now, if you can't qualify for one of those offers, making extra payments on high interest debt instead is it's a good money saving option. The faster you pay off those balances, the more you're saving interest charges. Also, take care of your credit. In unpredictable times, you may need to lean on that credit, right? To cover expenses when your hours are cut or to pay unexpected bills. Having good credit can not only give you the option to borrow money, but it can also get you the best terms, low interest rates on loans, right? That sounds great. Now, double down on good credit habits. If you have the resources to do so while meeting all of your other financial obligations, pay your bills on time, stay well below the limits of your credit cards if you can, make a debt payoff plan, be selective about applying to new lines of credit, and, and you know, all the while, keep tabs on that credit score. And, you know, you can do that for free. So, you know, don't think it's like, oh, I got to pay. Nope, free. You can go look it up. The last thing we need to talk about. Keep investing. Keep investing. This isn't the easy advice, though, when it comes, you know, like when you see the news being dominated by stocks lower, down again, down again, lower, new lows. But there is a silver lining to market downturns. Your regular investing contributions now buy you more, right, than when the market was really high. And then it's natural to want to sell during market drops, right? Like, oh, no, I'm losing. I want to sell. I want to sell. No, th they call this loss aversion. And studies suggest people feel the loss of $1 twice as much as a $1 gain. So this instinct means they have a tendency to sell stocks when a buy and hold strategy is just way better. When you sell shares as prices are falling, you, you guarantee that you have losses. And studies show that even professional investors usually fail when trying to time the market, right? That's predicting when to buy low and sell high. Instead, patience and in regular investment through dollar cost averaging, that's, that's your best bet for long term, right? Even after the 2007-2009 Great Recession, the biggest downturn since the Great Depression the S&P 500 regained its previous high five years and five months after hitting the bottom and then continued to rise for almost seven more years. So, a time-tested tactic. Time-tested tactic. If you're investing for the long term with a diversified portfolio, don't torment yourself by checking your portfolio value every day. Don't do it. Instead, just remember your long-term goals and the market Historically, every time it goes down, right back up. So don't check it often. I wouldn't even say check it every week. Maybe once a month, right? And, you know, these are just some of the things to help you during the recession, to help you plan for a recession. 
you know, in a recession, before a recession, after a recession, right? There's a bunch of other things you could do, but these are like the basics. These are like, you know, really like bolstering yourself in case something happens. And then when it does, you have a plan in place and you're ready to go, right? And you're not going to be blindsided. And then all of a sudden, oh God, oh God, oh God. So get yourself prepared, whatever that means for you. Do your research, get yourself prepared, and don't be blindsided. And come out of this recession with a buttload of money. Hope you guys liked the video. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. But until I see you guys in the next one, y'all be safe.